Radio Caroline was the best-known pirate radio station of the 1960s. She used to broadcast illegally to Britain until 1980 when pirate radio faded out. From a point at sea to the circles in your mind, this is the new Radio Caroline. But Caroline is now back on the air, and this week she ran up against her old enemy, the weather. The second-hand trawler they're broadcasting from snapped her anchor chain on Saturday and was left drifting in a Force 9 gale with six disc jockeys aboard. She was finally towed back into position on Wednesday. Caroline don't have the government licensed wavelength you need to operate a legal station, so they're broadcasting from two miles outside British controlled waters. In the last few years, Caroline have been joined by dozens of pirate stations hidden away on land with problems of their own. Running a pop radio station from the top of a cow shed isn't easy, particularly if your whole operation happens to be illegal, but it's about to become almost impossible. <laughs> Later this year, a new Telecommunications Act is going to give investigators the power to seize pirate radio equipment as soon as they can find it. That's going to be bad news for stations like this one, Sunshine Radio in Shropshire. They operate a seven-day-a-week service paid for by adverts from local companies and estimate 30,000 listeners a week. Pirate enthusiasts like this simply take over a wavelength and start transmitting from knock-together studios. Disc jockeys are unpaid and often working under false names. Just after 11.30, it's the news. News bulletins are cribbed from the teletext screen. Singer Linda McCartney has been fined £75 at Uxbridge Magistrates Court. The pirates just keep broadcasting until there's a knock on the door from British Telecom, followed usually by a hefty fine and the confiscation of the transmitter they're using. He'd earlier been fined in Barbados for possession of the drug. What sort of reaction did you get from your listeners when you were taken to court for running the station? Oh, it was overwhelming. <laughs> I mean, to the fact whereby they were ringing up offering to uh, send thousands of pounds, literally, you know, to us. And there was a whole town in Tembury Wells that uh, wanted to come out and join a, a ring around the the farm where it was coming from. Stop anybody getting in, you know. <laughs> that was overwhelming. British telecom investigators are in charge of tracking down pirate stations, but their telephone division couldn't be more helpful. Then uh, let me tell you why you're not having a competition. Our phone lines are dead today. It must be the bad weather. So While we were filming at Sunshine, their phone broke down, and British telecom arrived to fix it in time for the afternoon phone-in show. 1979 is the year we're looking at. Let's take a look at it now. This is the basic equipment needed to set up a station like Sunshine. It can be found for as little as £250 if it's bought second-hand. But cheap studios don't always provide the atmosphere listeners expect from a music station. How soundproof is this studio? It's not, <laughs> which is another problem with dogs barking. And because we're in the countryside, the odd cow, you know, makes itself be known to us. And the Air Force has quite a, adds a, quite a distinct flavour to the programming as well. If the wind's blowing in the right direction, they seem to come in pretty low. What would it take to shut Sunshine down completely? I think they'd probably have to lock everybody up and throw away the key, to be honest. I mean, everybody enjoys it so much. And I think by now, because there's so many people out there, people, you know, we feel a bit of a responsibility to them, because they keep saying to us, you know, don't go away. Small businesses cannot... Even local councillors broadcast on Sunshine. It's recognised as the only local station in the area, because there's no official service for Shropshire. Signing off, local council news for Sunshine Radio. Love to hear from you. Dave Owen, Radio Jackie. Meanwhile, in the crowded airwaves of South London, Radio Jackie is the most sophisticated of the pirate stations. It's on air 24 hours a day, has professional adverts, and carries international news bulletins on the hour. But the news bulletins are lifted from another station's output. This studio is hidden among a cluster of accountants' offices, and the transmitter is stashed in someone's roof. When the measures against pirate radio become much tougher this year, what will happen to Radio Jackie? Radio Jackie will continue broadcasting, not in this current form. We'll continue broadcasting one way or another. Um, there was a time, a long time ago, when we used to broadcast just one day a week at the weekends. Um, I can't see it going, going back to that situation, not after it's broadcasting 24 hours, 24 hours a day, and finding out that there is a need for what we're doing in South West London. It would be different if there wasn't a need, but we do have a very large audience. So uh, I think that we've got to carry on one way or another, and we will carry on one way or another. The pirate stations obviously don't intend to give in easily. 
If life becomes too uneasy on land after the new act, they could all go back to offshore broadcasting and have to cope with the sort of problems Radio Caroline have been having this week.